So we right click on the base uh, project and we choose new component and this time we will call it track curved and what should we call it? We'll choose uh, 300 millimeter radius and 15 degrees. So we will do the same as before. We will need uh, the joiner. So right click on the joiner, choose copy and paste it. Paste another one. And just as before, we will rotate it 180 degrees. So set pivot point, click in the middle. And it's important that you click, set, uh, click done here before you start to turn it. Otherwise, it will just mess with your point. It will not actually rotate the part. So click done. And then we rotate it 180 degrees. And click OK. Now this is a little bit more tricky because we're going to make a curve. So what I usually do, because this is centered uh, in a center position, we will move both of these bodies out to the radius that we want. So in this case 300 millimeter. So mark both of them and either click M or right click and click move. And now we will move them out with the same distance as the radius. In this case I chose the minus direction, so minus 300. You can see that they end up pretty far from the center. That's because if you make a circle of this circle with the, would be 600 millimeters, that's quite a big circle. So that's why it looks like it's far away from the origin. And then now you can see also that our uh, original joiner is still visible here. We can click uh, the eye button there to hide it so that we only see the things that we are working with now. Uh, now one thing that is important to mention is that it's important to uh, be in the right project and have the right component marked when you're working in it. So you can do that by right click and if, and, uh, if you're in the wrong component you need to click activate or you can also click the small round dot on the right side of the name. That will also uh, move the active, uh, this will make the, that component active. So let's move on and create the track. We will do almost the same as we did before. Uh, when we move the second joiner, now we will have to move it not just straight, we will have to move it in a circle. So mark it and press M or right click and click move. But now it's important our pivot point will be the center of the whole project instead. So click in the center. Now when we move we will see that the joiner moves in this big circle that would be, if we have the track all the way around, that would be a really, really big circle. And choose the number of degrees you want, in this case 15 degrees, so it will be uh, quite a small piece. The most of the track I print is 30 degrees, so it's a little bit longer uh, part. So you can choose, you can choose whatever uh, value you want there. And you can also make sure that you can divide uh, a circle uh, evenly with the number of degrees you choose so that you can make circles and have circles uh, with, the, with these parts. Otherwise it's going to be really hard to use them. So let's stick with 15 degrees for now because it, this will be a small example of a track. So click OK. Now here comes a big difference between making a straight track and making a curved track. Because we cannot just extrude as we did with the straight track, we need to make a curved one. And as you can see, these small pieces of track we have here are straight. 
so that's gonna make it a little bit problematic to start the track from this point we could actually do that uh, if we're not if we don't really care that we have a small piece of straight track but in this um, uh, in this case we have uh, quite a small piece and we all also have quite a narrow radius so I will try to I will show you how to fix that um, in this case so this time when we create a sketch we will not create it uh, by marking a surface like we did before now we want our curved track to start here in the zero point you could say of this piece of track where this actually is measured from and we want it to do to go all the way to this point so in this case we will select this surface and we will click create sketch and we will do as before but now we have to rotate it uh, you could unclick the origin and uh, ah yeah that's didn't really show didn't really change the pivot point uh, so never mind um, do as before mark the surfaces and project them by clicking the P key and then clicking the surface and OK and now you can see they are projected to our sketch that is now located on this other surface that we chose and we need to do exactly the same as we did before we need to seal off the the upper part because we only want to extrude the track and you can click finish sketch now it's time to extrude this and we cannot just uh, do, do it with the E command with the extrude command because as you know that extrudes a straight piece of track so in this case when we have a completely circular track with an origin we can use uh, the revolve tool so we click revolve and we choose the tracks from our sketch next thing we need to choose an axis that is the center the blue axis and we don't want it to go 360 degrees we want to go with minus 15 degrees in this case and now you can see that it, when we go minus 15 it's uh, completely aligned where we want the end of the track and the start of the track to be but we don't want to cut as you can see a fusion now things we want to cut because the thing we did intersects with other parts of the body so that's why fusion uh, things that we want to cut away but we don't want to do that at, at this point so instead we will from this drop down menu we will choose new body and we will do some modifications before we join them so click new body and now you can see you have four bodies in the tree you have the two joiners and you have each of the tr two tracks and we cannot join them quite yet because we have some small problems here that we want to fix you can see the old straight piece of track protruding here so we're gonna go ahead and remove that so what you can do you can unclick the visibility of your new track for now so let's remove the pieces of the track that we don't want and the track starts from this base surface here on the sleeper so we can actually use that in order to place a sketch so you can click on either of these that is really close to the track it doesn't matter which one I'll click on this one and we create a sketch and we need to project some surfaces that we're going to work with so press the P key and we want this end of the track here and we want the end of the whole track part we want this end of the track and uh, the other one we don't need to project because we already have it as a baseline here so click OK 
and you can just make sure that they were projected that you can see these uh, the purple lines and the dots that means it was projected as it should be now what we can do we could either just draw a line from here like this and you can see that you have an equal sign here that sh shows that these are uh, these are not at an angle between each other they are completely straight this is one way to do it or if you're uncertain you could draw a line from the center of the whole component that would make sure that you have the right uh, angle now what we need to do we're, we're going to use this sketch as a tool to remove part of the tracks so I go ahead and make a square you can see when it turns blue that means that it's completely closed that means we can use it to to extrude and extrude can mean both create something and it can also be uh, it can also mean remove something so in this case we're going to remove so either press finish or you can just mark this and extrude right away from the sketch but we're not really done yet we're gonna do that all, uh, down here as well so in this case I could click R for rectangle and I can mark this now exactly where it goes it doesn't matter this is just a tool this, as long as it's bigger than the things you want to remove and we want to remove the, these parts of the track that is not going to be straight we want to remove them so as long as this this square is bigger a rectangle is bigger than the pieces we want to remove that's fine so now we have our two rectangles so let's click finish and click on them and click extrude and as you can see it didn't choose the whole one so you can so click on the parts that it did not choose if there are any now we can see the whole rectangles are blue and now you can see what they do when you pull the arrow and you draw up they instantly turn red and that means that we're cutting we're using it as a cutting tool and that's what we want so click OK now you can see that the track parts that we don't want they are they are removed and if we show visibility on our curved track we can see that they they intersect pretty well here that's good enough they, it's not it's not 100 percent perfect uh, and it's not going to be 100 percent perfect here either uh, but that's okay that doesn't matter but you can see that also that our, the track pieces we created, they are in the way of the joiner here. So we need to uh, we need to remove that. And we can actually do that with the same sketch that we used before. We don't need to create a new sketch. So double click on the sketch or right click and make and click edit. And we can actually use the line that we projected before and draw a box around the part of the track that we want to remove like that and when we click finish now the extrude we did before is, is not changed as long as we don't remove any lines that it used it will be the same so we can click on the visibility of the sketch so that we can reuse it but this time we will mark the new boxes we made and click E for extrude and also click the other one and pull it up now you can see that it removes the part of the track we don't want and click OK now this is actually a functional track you can also unclick the visibility of the sketch and at this stage I would also recommend that you try to combine these to make sure that they, are, they have not accidentally been moved in the wrong position or something so click join and make sure that you get one body 
So this means that this works. There are no there are no real problems with it. So now we can go ahead because we need the sleepers because this looks quite empty. So click on the sleeper component as we did before, right click and choose copy. Now we can unclick the visibility there so we don't have that in the way and you can either click on the on the component or you can click on the bodies in the tree that doesn't matter and you uh, you choose paste and now you don't see it that's because it was pasted in the center so what we do we move it out with the radius we choose 300 and we click OK now there is a different tool that we can use either you can just copy them and you can move them and use uh, the, the origin as a center uh, but there is also a function in Fusion uh, called pattern that we can use so if you mark the sleeper and we choose pattern and we choose circular pattern and we see in this box that the object is already chosen and it should say bodies and it should say one selected so you don't select any other ones and then we need to click axis and um, again we need to choose the blue one and now it says type full circle but we don't want to use the full circle we want to use an angle and in this case we're using minus 15 degrees and the reason it's minus is just because where we placed the track we could have placed it on the other side of the origin that would have made it uh, a positive number so that, that doesn't really matter and now it's also a case where you could you could actually measure and you can place them with precision uh, but as I used be said before it's, it's it's not really that critical uh, you can jo you can you, you can just choose whatever looks good and uh, but what you can see in this case is that because because the measurement is done from one side of the sleeper you have more space here than here so you can actually decrease the angle a bit either so all of the new ones you created uh, can be seen I'll go for that because I will remove the first one and the last one and now you can see that they are they are pretty evenly distributed and if you made a, for example a 30 degree track part you could just increase the quantity so you have 10 of them but it depends on how how many of them you want and how uh, tight you want them so it's uh, it's basically what you think looks good I think that looks good and uh, we can remove the first and the last one because we don't want it to collide with the joiners so right click and choose remove and there you have it so let's join all these together so there we have our body and this can now be uh, exported so you can choose save as SDL That's will, that will change that will save an SDL file that you can import in the slicer and you can print it so let's uh, name this something so that uh, this name will be used in the file name when you export so I usually try to, to name these so when I save them that I save the that I save them with the right name so I don't mess up with which versions I have so the next time I export the same body within uh, some modifications it will export the same name so I will not mess up so in this case curved 300 millimeter uh, 15 degrees so there we have it that's a curved track piece